Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on Oklahoma Gardening, we are wrapping up the gardening season with a tour of newness and growth within the Horticulture and Landscape Architecture Program at Oklahoma State University. Host Casey Hinches introduces us to a new leader with a familiar face. We check out all of the exciting growth happening at the Botanic Garden at OSU. Take a tour of the new Greenhouse Learning Center on the OSU Stillwater campus. Tom Kuhn, Vice President and Dean of Agriculture Programs at OSU, stops by to talk about OSU Extension and the construction of a high-tech ag hall. And Casey gives us a sneak peek of the fresh new gardening season that awaits us in the coming year. this year was what any of us had planned. But when does a gardening season ever go as planned? One thing that we can all agree on is that this year has been unforgettable. Today we want to take the opportunity to share with you some of the ways this year has been unforgettable for us here at OSU. To start us off, Dr. Justin Ketone Moss was named our new department head for the Horticulture and Landscape Architecture Department. You may be familiar with Dr. Moss as he's done several segments on Oklahoma gardening related to turf grass and water conservation. Dr. Moss is well suited for this position as he has first-hand experience with all the roles that pertain to it. He received all three of his degrees from OSU and has a great appreciation for the role that the students play and their desire for learning. Over the past 12 years, Dr. Moss has gained firsthand experience fulfilling the mission of our land-grant institution of teaching, research, and extension. While Dr. Moss's schedule has gotten a little bit busier, he reassures me that he enjoys being a part of our show and will continue to offer segments to our viewers. Here is Dr. Moss to share with us about developments within our Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. It's been an exciting year here in the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture at Oklahoma State University. We've had a different year, but it's been a good year. And so our students have come in the fall and they have taken their classes and they have been in person. But we've also transitioned a lot to be online this semester. We're going to do that again in the spring and our students are doing very well. We want to give them that hands-on experience so we are doing our classes in person at like our new classroom at the Greenhouse Learning Center, which is a wonderful new facility here for our department. And the students love it. Not only do we have a brand new classroom, but also beautiful greenhouse facilities for them to work in and get hands-on experience. In addition to our new classroom space in the Greenhouse Learning Center, we're also getting a brand new landscape architecture studio for our landscape architecture students. And it's gonna be in the third floor of Ag Hall. It's currently under renovations and we'll be ready to go for spring semester. Right now we've got over a little bit over 100 students in the program and that's split up between horticulture majors and landscape architecture majors. And for this fall we'll even have new options for them. They can now major in horticulture, science and hort business, uh, public garden management. We're going to have some new options like in urban horticulture and by the way, we have a new faculty member to run that program, Dr. Biz In Hu. And we're really getting excited about some of our work in edible crops. And we have another new faculty member, Dr. Liu Zhang, focusing on pecans. And we have a new faculty member that's going to join us very soon. We're currently looking for a grape and wine extension specialist that will join us, thanks to some funding through Oklahoma Department of Agriculture. 
So hey, great things are coming. We're excited for the new year. Our students are gonna be ready. Our faculty, staff, they're gonna be ready. And I wanna say thank you to our horticulture industry partners across the state for their continued support of our program. And what we're gonna do is just have a great year and we're gonna advance the industry of horticulture for the state of Oklahoma. From bare bones maintenance early this spring when we were under strict quarantine to a historic early ice storm that we just recently experienced. The Botanic Gardens here at OSU, like many gardens, has shown its fortitude and perseverance. And just like your garden may have gone through some renovations, the Botanic Garden here also has gone through some transformations. Dr. Lou Anella, director of the Botanic Garden, joins us to share with us some of the new features that you'll find here. Hi everybody, my name is Lou Anella. I'm the director of the Botanic Garden at Oklahoma State University and professor of horticulture in the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. We'd like to give you an update on some of the projects we've had here this year. You know, with COVID-19, it's been terrible. Our ambassadors, our volunteers haven't been able to work with us and we miss doing some of the programming we've always done, but man, have we had a busy year and a lot's been going on. So the Tree Walk Village that you see here is one of the projects that we've done in the last year. And we've got another phase of the Tree Walk Village coming hopefully in this coming few months. And this is just a wonderful facility to attract children to the Botanic Garden, get them interested in being out of doors, get them interested in horticulture. And this is a lot of fun and a lot of people have been using it. So the Tree Walk Village was built with a recreational trails grant that is federal money that comes through the Department of Tourism at, uh, for the state of Oklahoma. And we've also had some private donor sponsorships. Uh, on Q and the Griffith family have made a donation to the Tree Walk Village. The Payne County Audubon Society has made a donation and a private donor, Lynn Miller, has as well. So we're really happy to have those sponsors and to have that support for getting the second phase of the Tree Walk Village done. So the other great projects we finished in August was the road and the parking lot. So we've never had a paved road here at the Botanic Garden. It is, the Botanic Garden is one of Stillwater's jewels. It's really important to the community, it's important to the university, and you've never been able to get here on a paved road. So we're really happy to have a paved road, to have a paved parking lot, makes it so much safer for people, makes it easier for people who have accessibility issues, and it just brings us up into the 21st century. So we're really happy. The university provided most of the funding, the department provided funding as well, and again, we've had private donors chip in. Ray Campbell was our largest donor, uh, Leslie uh, Imboden and uh, Susie Taylor, Bob and Marsha Adams and Lynn Hughes were all donors to this project and Debbie Skinner. And so we're really pleased. Debbie Skinner is going to help us build a structural element in the, in the parking lot. In the islands of the parking lot, we're going to have these architectural elements that one of our landscape architecture students is designing. And we're excited to see that come to fruition this spring. So again, because of COVID-19, things have changed and we're adapting like everybody else. We're not doing programming right now, but we hope to bring a concert back in the spring. And so that's a great event to have here at Laura's Bandstand. It'll be out of doors and hopefully that'll be safe and we can do that. And then as soon as this COVID-19 thing is done, we'll go back to programming, have more programming again. We did have our herb sale this year and our mom and pumpkin sale and they were a great success. We did not have the festivals, but we did allow people to come and buy the herbs and uh, contact lists and buy the mums and pumpkins, and that was a great success. So we appreciate everybody's support in that. 
So this spring, our garden manager, Jane Carter, retired. She's been our garden manager and designer for almost 10 years here, so we're sorry to lose her, but we wish her well in retirement. And we've hired Linda Carrier to be our new garden manager. She has worked in the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture for almost 20 years, and we're really glad to have her on board. So we have limited programming right now, but we are open. And a lot of people are using the Botanic Garden every day because they feel it's a safe place to get together. It's a safe place to bring their children because it's out of doors. And so the Botanic Garden has been more busy than ever. So we invite you, please, to come on by, come visit the garden. Even this time of year, it's beautiful. There's always so much to see. And check Facebook and check our website for updates about when we can start programming again, when we might have that concert, and when we're going to have our next sales. So we hope to see you at the Botanic Garden and good luck in the coming year. the background of a few of our segments this past season, but today we wanted to take the opportunity to look at the new Greenhouse Learning Center. This facility was built and completed last year, replacing the old teaching greenhouses. It provides the students with a new opportunity to produce a crop and learn how to grow plants in a high-tech climate-controlled environment. Being such a beautiful and important facility, it was located even closer to the center of campus than the previous greenhouses, further conveying the priority of horticulture science and hands-on learning here at OSU. Dr. Bruce Dunn, floriculture professor in the Department of Horticulture, who utilizes this facility for many of his classes, took the time to tour us around the new Greenhouse Learning Center. <music> Welcome to the Greenhouse Learning Center. We often refer to this facility as the GLC. Uh, this facility has been here for a year now that's been open. This is part of a $6.6 .6 million uh, facility. And this is actually a shared facility within the Ferguson College of Ag, so all departments within the, within the college are welcome to utilize this facility. It's got several different areas to it. It's got an outside learning uh, classroom for it which has uh, raised beds. It also has some in-ground production. It's got a turf site associated with it. And right now I'm inside the Greenleaf Nursery head house uh, within, this green, uh, within the Greenhouse Learning Center. With the Greenleaf Nursery, they donated a million dollars towards this head house. And you can see we're standing here in this classroom. Uh, what's nice about this classroom is the size. Compared to our old facility, this has twice the amount of seats that we can have. So twice the amount of students that are learning uh, about horticulture, for example. Um, also with this, we have, you can see there's screens located on the sides of the walls, and so there's not a bad seat in this classroom. It's also climate controlled versus the old facility that we had. We had some window units, so that makes it pretty nice. And so what we utilize these screens for, a lot of times, instead of writing on the whiteboards now, we're utilizing technology. We can write on the iPads, project it up on the screens, which makes it, which makes it really nice for the students so they can see that information. Also within this facility is we have greenhouses, and so specifically there's five greenhouses plus a small entomology greenhouse off to the side, because nobody wanted to be near the insects. Uh, so if you want, we can take you out into the greenhouses and I'll show you a tour and talk about some of the technology that we have at this facility.
So now we're out in the greenhouses, and I just wanted to mention a little bit about the technology. These greenhouses are automated. So we have things such as to control the temperatures, and we have automated shade cloths, which is nice. Our old greenhouses, we had to throw the shade cloth up over the greenhouses. But now we have set points that we can put into it. If the light levels are too high, it will automatically close or automatically open back up. So at 5 o'clock at the end of the day, it will roll out this blackout. The ends will all close off and it'll be completely dark in here. And that's really nice for short day crops, something like the poinsettias or mums are also short day crops. So that's a nice feature. Um, another feature that we have is we have uh, irrigation in each of the greenhouses. So H.E. Anderson donated um, irrigation controllers for each of the greenhouses so that we can run different fertilizer regimes for different crops, uh, which is really nice. Uh, also, what you'll find in here is supplemental light, so high pressure sodium, but we also have two of our outside uh, greenhouses. The greenhouses on the outside edges uh, have some LED lighting associated with those. So if you see this facility at night, you'll see that it glows kind of this pinkish color, which is a combination of this red and blue light. So another innovation that we have in the greenhouses are these rolling benches, which are nice. So in our old facility, we had stationary benches. But with this new facility, we're keeping with ADA compliance. And so if we just had stationary benches, we'd have probably half as many uh, benches or the benching space in order to grow those crops. So with these rolling benches, it allows us to still maintain that ADA compliance. But also, you'll see that these crops can be kind of pushed together in here so that you're able to get down these aisles. So basically, it improves our benching efficiency or how many, how many different crops that we can grow in this greenhouse, the total production space. Um, as far as the facility, if you see it, it's one of the tallest greenhouses in Oklahoma. Uh, it's basically based off of a Dutch style, low profile greenhouses, so really high greenhouses, which is nice because it gets the heat off of the crops itself. Also, we have acrylic as far as the covering of these greenhouses, and so that's good for 25 plus years, which is also nice. Uh, one of our houses off to this uh, east side of me, it has hydroponics in it, so we're utilizing some of the latest technology uh, in the horticulture industry uh, for growing crops. And then we also have heated propagation benches, which is nice. So if you're in the propagation area uh, systems, then you know that heat is definitely important as far as getting uh, cuttings to root or seeds uh, to develop on those crops. Um, and so I think, as I mentioned, we're here with the poinsettia crop. And so our poinsettia sale is always the Thursday and Friday after Thanksgiving, and this year it's December 3rd and 4th. So please come out and join us. This fall semester, we were excited to have the energy that the students bring back on campus. Just like a garden isn't the same if you can't share it, the campus isn't the same without the students. As we close out this year, we invited Dr. Tom Kuhn, our Vice President and Dean, to share with us about the future of the Division of Agriculture Sciences and Natural Resources. Well, 2020 is definitely a year to remember. Uh, it's very easy to get caught up in the present, uh, all that we've had to deal with this year, uh, and kind of overwhelming in a way, and yet I'm really proud of the fact that our faculty and our students and our staff have really persevered. It, you know, here on campus, uh, the faculty and students back in the spring pivoted very quickly to online instruction. And then over the summer months, we had time to really prepare carefully and thoughtfully about still building on our strength of face-to-face -face instruction, uh, when we could do it safely, 
uh, and when we couldn't to really adapt and, and provide online instruction. So hats off to our faculty and students for making those adjustments. In addition, our extension educators in our county offices were tremendous in pivoting very quickly to be able to provide programs, to provide assistance uh, online or through the phone or through texting or whatever. Uh, and really, we've continued to deliver very well on our extension programs this year. It took a lot of effort, I know. Uh, people had to learn skills, uh, Zoom or WebEx or, or Teams uh, very, uh, very quickly. But, you know, in a way, I think we may have reached more people this year through extension than we ever have before. Our 4-H educators adapted and had, were very creative in some of the things that they did with online contests and, uh, uh, and training. So uh, I really appreciate the way that our folks have persevered here in the present. But, you know, our land-grant institution also has to look to the future. Uh, and we've had some really exciting things happen this year that really are more forward-looking as well. Certainly, early this year, we had the fantastic announcement of the gift from the Ferguson Family Foundation. Uh, and with that, the college's name was changed to the Ferguson College of Agriculture. Uh, and, uh, and that has gone very well. Uh, that also is tied in with the campaign to raise funds for a new building for our college. So here it is, 2020, we're celebrating the 130th birthday of Oklahoma State University, started as Oklahoma A&M College. Seems to make sense that that A, the agricultural part of A&M College, is going to get a new home. Uh, and so while we started on the frontier in 1890, we're now really pursuing a new frontier of creating a, a vision and a new uh, home for the Ferguson College of Agriculture here uh, uh, for the 21st century. The new building will be located just northeast of where the current agricultural hall is. Uh, we're excited about the planning that's gone on. The faculty have had a lot of influence on the design and how it'll look. We really want it to help us change the way we teach, change the way we do research, and, and create a, a home-like environment for students. So we're excited about the way the architects have, have pulled that together into the design. It's a design that uh, uh, really is going to uh, uh, be finished here in the next month or two uh, so that we can break ground in the spring of 2021 uh, and we'll be moving into that new building in the fall of 2023. So uh, quite a momentous year in so many ways uh, and of course we wouldn't be able to do anything uh, without the support of the people of Oklahoma. Uh, many people who have been uh, generous uh, to us with their wealth uh, and with their talents and skills. Uh, and we're just really excited about how that positions us for the future so that we can continue to be the land-grant university that the people of Oklahoma need. If there's one thing that I know, it's the gardeners are optimistic. And while this year has had its challenges, with challenges come growth. I know for some of you that might have meant finally tackling that landscape project that you've had on your radar for a while. And for some of you that might have meant just slowing down and enjoying your home garden a little bit more. Regardless, during unsettling times, gardening has always and will continue to provide us solace. Although we weren't able to travel the state this year and showcase home gardens as much as we typically do, next year we look forward to showcasing some of those renovations that we know have occurred over this past season. While this show concludes our regular programming, you can continue to find ideas, inspiration, and information as we air best of shows through the winter months. And if you found refuge in gardening over this past year, I would encourage you to share that with those around you. Whether it's taking a little one to show them the miracle of starting seeds for the first time, or digging up some of your perennials and sharing them with a neighbor. While we may not be able to greet and hug each other as frequently as we would like, sharing the gift of gardening with someone can offer them the same sincerity and comfort that we all need. 2021 is going to be a new season of opportunity. 
and inevitably with a new season, new weeds are bound to show up in your garden. But I hope you choose to focus on the flowers instead. There are lots of great horticultural events this time of year. Be sure and consider these activities when you're making your plans for the weeks ahead. For the next two weeks, we will not air on the main OETA channel, but you can find reruns of seasonal programs on the OETA World Channel. And then starting December 12th, we'll have a great lineup of Best of Oklahoma Gardening compilations. And we'll also be continuing our online Winter Oklahoma Gardening podcast as well. You can find podcast times and topics on our website and social media. Thank you for joining us in the garden this year. And we wish you joy, health, wellness, and a promise of hope that comes with the newness of spring. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and the Tulsa Garden Club.